Welcome to part two of objective setting. In part one, we explored North Star objectives, what bad looks like, mistakes, and much more. So if you missed it, go take a look. In this episode, we're continuing the conversation and exploring everything from the indicators of success to securing alignment on objectives, to the value of transparency and much more. So get ready to go back under the hood. I guess a good question to ask probably at this point is around good and bad objectives for an ABM program. And I know that this is going to be very much contextual to a, to a, a, a business as, you know, um, where, where a business is at and mm -hmm. what, what they're looking to achieve, et cetera. But is there anything, you know, specifically you would say is a bad objective for an ABM program? Anything that you, you think the ABM is just not meant for this shouldn't be used in, the, in that way? Um, yeah, it's a really good question. And I think it's, it's a difficult one to answer because objectives are so, I suppose, they are contextual to where a business is and how mature that business is and what they're trying to do. I think as a, a kind of broad answer, I would say there's, there's no really, um, no really terrible objectives to have as long as it's kind of relevant to, to what you're trying to do within the ABM program. I think the big, the bigger issue comes when you're trying to measure a kind of maybe it's the right thing but in the wrong place like we were just talking about about trying to measure revenue uh, kind of metrics and objectives within the first three months when the campaign yeah. itself isn't actually designed to drive those kinds of conversations so mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily think there's a there's a bad objective as such unless you've got uh, mm -hmm. another thought about that but from from my perspective it's about making sure that the what you are trying to measure is relevant and that it's actually driving towards that bigger goal um so yeah that that would probably be what i would say about that yeah i, I think i mean i completely agree i think um the only the only time i would say there are there is something you could maybe consider a bad objective is when it's when it's bad for a, a business context so if for 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 a specific business they are um, you know, looking to essentially, they want to bring in huge numbers of of um, contacts into their into their database. Mm -hmm. They want they want like warm leads, right? From from an, an ABM perspective, like you can absolutely that can absolutely be an objective, and it might well be that depending on where the business is, that's the right objective to have for the ABM program at that time. But for other businesses that's potentially not the right approach because it's it's essentially giving them it's fo making them focus on the wrong things right they're yeah. focusing on the on the individual contacts you know you can buy contact data you can you can do lead gen programs that will get that in and actually that's that's not really going to help them get to the place where they actually want to get to so i guess what i'm saying is there's the 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 time when an objective might not be the right one is when actually it's kind of masking uh, or or, or act in, ha acting in place of the real yeah. objective. The real objective isn't getting warm leads or, or contacts in a database. The real objective is getting to revenue, right? That's yeah. that's the real objective. But the, the the in a way, it's that it's it's they've got those they've they've perceived that the leading indicators are 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 these, and actually, mm. so they're the wrong leading indicators to be taking taking notice of in a way, and and putting and setting those leading indicators as objectives in and yeah, of yeah. themselves which I think is, is sometimes what causes issues for, for businesses because they say, right, well, why can't we, if we add more budget or add more, you know, have more campaigns running, we could get more leads coming through or more more contacts through. Mm -hmm. And it and it's kind of like, y yes, but is that going to help us actually get to the revenue? Because yeah. how many of those are actually going to convert in, and move along the journey? So yeah, exactly. I think that's one one sort of type of, of objective that's not necessarily the best to have. Yeah. Um, you know, broadly speaking. Yeah, I think, I think it's it's a really good point. And it's about considering kind of available resource. Like anything, like we know that working in ABM, um, it's still relatively new for a lot of businesses. And, and because of that, mm -hmm. it starts out quite small as like a pilot program. Maybe you've got one marketer, one salesperson. Like that's a very limited kind of amount of resource to be expected to, to kind of do great things. But it's not saying that great things aren't possible. It's just that no. you have to be very focused about what's going to drive 
business value as quickly as possible to be able to then justify investment in more and more resources. So if you've got an objective which is kind of leading you down the wrong path and taking away from that resource and becoming a distraction, then that, I suppose, in the context of your question, that could be seen as a, a bad objective because that mm. kind of goes down as wasted resource or or maybe not wasted resource, but kind of misaligned resource. And then it, it takes you longer to actually achieve what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about an example as well with with, with a client that I've worked with where <clears throat> they, they were um, looking to you know, get an ABM program up and running and, 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 and start seeing the results from, from that program. But they were very well aware that of the limitations, A, of the resource and, and B, of the, the budget that they had in the, in the early stages. And also, as well as that, the, the limitations of things like content, mm -hmm. they didn't have much, much content created. They didn't have a particularly great website at the time. There's lots of, lots of almost foundational sort of fundamental things that needed fixing or, or, or organizing first mm -hmm. and and they were they were aware of that and and patient about the need to get that stuff fixed yeah. first of all um so the first six 12 months of the <clears throat> of the program was almost was almost that it was it wasn't necessarily uh, a full abm program as we would kind of define it it was more about setting up all of the infrastructure and resources that were needed for yeah a longer term ABM program to, to then sort of see fr come to fruition. And, and because we did that sort of setup phase and that foundational phase, then the next, the, the next 12 months were a lot easier. We started seeing results coming through based on, you know, moving accounts from, from one of one of stage to the next and, and then eventually getting deals and opportunities and, and revenue coming through, um, you know, after that sort of into that second year. But, the if if they if that client had come to us with the objective of we need to get revenue and pipeline year one yeah um and we uh, with what we knew after we'd kind of evaluated their their website their content the resource that they had available all of that mm -hmm. that would have been a bad objective or an objective that we wouldn't have necessarily agreed to as a, as, a, as an agency working with them yeah, yeah. because of where they were at again it's that context of where they're at and where it, and how long it would take to get them to to that place of, yeah. of, of revenue so i think um yeah it's, it's it's there's as you say it's not necessarily that there are bad objectives it's just that there are bad objectives contextually to the place where that business where a business is at at that moment in time depending on their their situation their resources their circumstances all of yeah, that yeah absolutely um from a Flipping it the other way around, then are there any? Are there, is there such a thing as a good objective in ABM? Is there anything that you think we should, you know, all, all ABM programs or most ABM programs should focus on, should be built around? Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's similar to to the previous question. I don't think there's good or bad objectives for, that are universal mm. because a good objective to one company yeah. may not work for another. But I think when we're talking mm -hmm. about kind of what does success look like in an ABM program, I'll go back to kind of the three R's model and think about reputation, relationships and revenue. And there's some really key metrics that I always look out for that I think are, are good indicators of whether an ABM program is successful. And from a, a kind of measurement point of view, I think there's definitely account engagement and understanding kind of touch points within an account. Um, like how, how many times are you getting an account engaging with the content? How many times do they turn up to events, webinars, having conversations with the sales team, whether that's social selling or, or offline or by email? Um, account engagement metrics like that are really good indicator of kind of, especially if you can compare it to pre-ABM campaign versus in the um, ABM campaign, because that gives you an indicator of the, um, I suppose, the frequency uh, as well. If it increases, then that's a good thing. Um, and then there's also uh, metrics around kind of the account's uh, footprint and, and the footprint that you have within the account. If you are kind of starting an ABM program and you've got three or four custom, uh, three or four stakeholders within the, the account and you're trying to kind of win a, a larger deal in there, you know that there's certain um, stakeholders that you need to be engaged with. Maybe you've not been able to engage with them b before. But if the ABM program can then unlock those stakeholders and you can see in your CRM that you're you're having conversations with them, you're getting them to engage with different pieces of content, they're 
proactively seeking out um, you to kind of talk about um, the solutions and stuff that you offer. And that's a, that's a real positive step. And that, that kind of sign of relationships growing, that's really important. Um, alongside that, things like net new contacts within the database, if you can kind of show a positive trend there, then that's great. Um, and then ultimately, if we go on to the revenue perspective, it ultimately comes down to pipeline, deal velocity, deal size. Um, if you can kind of show positive trends there, uh, then your ABM program is going great guns because you're, you're able to directly show the business how reputation and relationship has correlated to increased revenue opportunities. So I think... I think to answer the question, it's it's not necessarily about an objective being good in of itself, but it's about being able to tell that story about how these groups of objectives all add up together to show overall business impact. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And, and I guess as well, you know, with with um, with w when you've kind of understood the when you've understood the impact of each kind of stage of, of those sort of three R's, there's there's objectives that that tie to those that you can, that you can then kind of, you know, that's what you can feed back to the business, mm -hmm. right? So you can say, right, the objective of the objective of months three to six of this program, for example, is going to be purely focusing on awareness. If we get anything else coming through, great. If we get some, if we get some leads or we get some conversations started, fantastic. But ultimately the goal here is to build that level of awareness and what we're looking to do. So our overarching objective for this part of the program or this part of the campaign is to get, let's say awareness within 90% of the accounts mm -hmm. that, we're, that we're targeting, you know, as, as a, a sort of um, plucking a number out of the air, but you know, we, that's the, the goal is to hit that amount of, of kind of coverage within, yeah. within these accounts. And then, the, and then month six to nine, maybe it's about moving, you know, 30% of those accounts to the point where you've built a relationship with them, whatever that might mean from a, from a sort of specific metrics perspective. So, and then, you know, the next three months, it might be moving X number of those into into opportunity stage or deal stage. The the, the fact is, I think having those have, having an overarching objective for the whole program that, that kind of sits above that is is, is really important. And, and one thing to be to be aware of, but then also having that that sort of uh, time specific or, or stage specific kind of mm -hmm. uh, North Star goal is also super important, right? Because otherwise it's, it's a bit like, it's a little bit like, um, not, you, you know, you're not necessarily going to be able to demonstrate that the, the impact and the efficacy of a program, um, until you've hit that overarching North star objective, yeah. right? If you haven't got these kind of these other objectives that sit underneath, you could, you, you know, you might want to call them those sort of leading indicators, or you might want to say that each, each stage has its own objective. Um, that you're kind of trying to hit and, and and by doing that it gives you the opportunity to kind of move on to you know and do well in the next stage as well yeah yeah definitely so i guess um another kind of question or or key consideration when it comes to objective setting is well sales and marketing alignment mm -hmm. i mean from from a perspective of both getting sales and marketing alignment but also ensuring that there is sales and marketing alignment on on the goals and objectives and, and how, how to kind of achieve that. So what, what would you say from a, how would you kind of approach this? What would you say is the most important kind of considerations when it comes to sales and marketing alignment and goal setting or objective yeah. setting for an ABM program? Yeah, I think um, like, like I said before, the most important thing is that the objectives themselves, they're shared objectives, they're agreed up front and everybody's on the same page when it comes to objectives. Um, but that, that's kind of, if you can do that between like yourself, the marketer and your main sales counterpart, then that's half the battle won. But then you've also got to engage the rest of the team to be able to, to feel the same way about being on the same page. Um, and I think one of the things that I've seen in kind of past roles, um, is quite often we have this kind of cadence of, of meetings around like board meetings or like monthly reporting and, and. And what that leads to is essentially this kind of um, relationship where <laughs> there's a lot of conversation that happens between the first of the month and the last of the month. But really, the only time we're talking about objectives and measurement is on the last day of the month, because that's the day that we're doing reporting. So mm -hmm. everything else in between almost becomes like noise. 
And I think for an ABM program, you you really want to avoid that. Um, and you want to actually establish more of a cadence of a weekly basis, maybe, where sales and marketing teams are talking with a specific agenda around the objectives that have been set on a weekly basis and saying, well, how are we doing the last week? What kind of levers have we pulled? What levels of engagement have we had? And really being able to kind of increase the frequency of those conversations so that um, it doesn't just feel like something that you talk about once a month and then it becomes kind of background noise to everything else. It's really got to feel part of your role. Um, so I think that's 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 certainly one thing. Um, and I think the second thing that I think is essential for like a successful ABM program is the, the idea of having dashboards and shared dashboards and also making them accessible to everyone. Like I think in, in the past uh, I've seen, and I've been guilty of it myself as well, is that as a marketer, you almost become a gatekeeper of, of dashboards and reporting. And um, like it gives you a lot of control in terms of showing sales what you want them to see but that's not conducive yeah. to building great sales and marketing alignment. What you have to do is create a dashboard that's that's open, it's honest, and both sales and marketing can see the data. Maybe you need to kind of contextualize some of it, um, particularly if you're talking around kind of campaign level metrics, if there's certain um, reasons for things that are happening. Um, so sales can kind of understand like what the trend trends are. Um, but I think it's really important to be open and honest with the data and not gatekeep those dashboards. Sales should have just as much right as the marketing team to have a look at um, what's going on with campaigns in an ABM program. And likewise, the marketers should be seeing kind of the sales dashboards as well. Um, so I'm, I'm a big advocate of creating kind of shared dashboards where everybody can see the data and it's, it's accessible, it's easy to understand. I think, um, yeah, I don't know who said it, but but the phrase less is more comes to mind, especially when you're talking about yeah. how can we make progress. You don't want to be overwhelmed by tons and tons of different metrics. You just need the most important ones front and center. So you can understand very quickly what difference have we made in the last week um, to the target accounts that we're trying to win. Yeah, I, th I think you make I think you made some really good points there. And so, I mean, one thing I would, I would touch on, I, I have... When I, with clients that I work with, often the um, we we have different dashboards potentially for sales and marketing. Right, that's that's um, something that's kind of ingrained in the behaviours of the of the sales and marketing teams. And what I try and do is at least have a a dashboard that either they both share as well. So there's one that kind of feeds both, you know, combines the two into into one. Maybe some of the top metrics from each one goes goes into that, or the metrics that are maybe the most important influential for each team to see mm -hmm. of the others you know of the others goes into one dashboard or alternatively you can keep the dashboard separate but, but each team has access to, the, to them and, and can view them you know as easily as as they can view their own that i think is is super important and you know you can obviously have there's so many different tools that you can yeah. use for that but having that 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 combined view whether, in whatever format that is i think is is really important and i think you mentioned about you know tracking uh not tracking everything or not or not necessarily displaying everything um and i think the, i think that's the key point or the key key thing to be aware of i don't think it's a bad thing to track a lot <laughs> of data if you can yeah. you know from different campaigns and 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 everything you know not necessarily every single bit of data that you can get your hands on but but certainly anything that could have some kind of influence or impact on on your understanding of 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 the success of the abm program right but what's necessary to be played back or displayed on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis to the sales team mm -hmm. or, or to other stakeholders or to the wider business, that's, that's the call that you've got to make and, and understand, you know, they don't need to see everything. They don't need to see, you know, things around the number of impressions yeah. on, a, on a display ad and stuff like that. It's not, it's not going to be something that A, interests them or B, has any impact on their, on what they do. Um, as opposed to seeing overall pictures of, you know, account statuses, where's it, how, where's an account gone from and to, or contact level data and, and in, insight into where a contact is, you know, the journey that the contact's gone on. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of stuff that's really interesting at a, at a sales level and at a, a wider business level. So having that, I guess, understanding that as a marketer, it's worth tracking a lot of data and having, having your eye on it, on everything, but you don't need to share all of that with the sales and, and and wider business 
you shouldn't hide it either though yeah that, that's the other thing right it's like that should be ready if they, if they want to dig into that then uh, for, for whatever reason then that should be easily accessible for them to do so and obviously there are a lot of you know tools crm and marketing automation tools and things like that that can kind of give you that collaborative mm-hmm. approach um but yeah i don't think i don't think they need to be seeing on a weekly basis all of that kind of campaign level data necessarily no. Um, so yeah, that was just a point point to make there. But in, t- in terms of, I guess, overarching sort of takeaways then, when it comes to objective setting, would you say that there's, is, is there anything that you would, you would kind of want people to be, if you were to, if you were to summarize what it is that people should be thinking about when they're, when they're starting setting objectives for an ABM program, what, what are the kind of three key takeaways that they should be, be thinking about? Yeah, good question. I think number one is they have to be joined up. They have to be done in collaboration because if you are coming with your own individual objectives from a sales and marketing perspective, it's only going to lead to kind of misalignment and confusion later down the road. So number one is making sure that um, sales and marketing set the objectives in in, in collaboration together. Um, yep. Number two, make sure that you have the kind of right objectives for for the right stage of your abm program think about where you are today and where you can be in six months or beyond and make sure that those objectives are achievable um and and step three i think would be make sure that you can report on those objectives it's no good setting an objective if you can't kind of easily and, and easily find the data that's readily available to actually make it meaningful for the business so I think ultimately, if you can do those three things, um, then it kind of gives you a good foundation to be able to build your ABM program. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with with all three of those. And I think, um, you know, the the key thing then is what, you know, from that point, what's the next step, mm-hmm. right? So how do you translate the the objectives into into action, into yeah. into into specific targets? And, and it's, it, you know, it's the how. And we will very much dig into that on on future episodes around you know setting strategies, campaign strategies, and channel choices, and all of that kind of stuff um, as as we go. But for now, I think um, yeah, that's that's uh, a good kind of deep dive into into objective setting for ABM. If you've got any questions or um, any points you wanted to raise, feel free to to reach out to us on on LinkedIn or um, yeah on LinkedIn and. Um, if you want to uh, learn a bit more about objective setting in ABM, we will have a resource that we'll be sharing alongside this episode, which will dive into some of the kind of specific considerations that we've talked about today and, and maybe do a bit of an evaluation of, of help you do a bit of an evaluation of where you're, you're at and your business is at in terms of setting ABM objectives. But Josh, thanks very much again for a good chat today and uh, speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jack.